Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. Today I want to share with you a fascinating topic and it's on the wholesome and badass version of the different types. In this video, I'm going to break down uh, what would be the wholesome version of your type and what would be the badass version according to the cognitive functions. And in future videos, I'm going to talk about the different types specifically, all 16 types, but I'm going to talk about how you can identify the wholesome and badass badass version of your type. I'm going to have a list of the what you'll be what will be the corresponding versions on the side of this video here so that you could follow along. If you want to learn how to cultivate effortless self-improvement that embraces both self-acceptance as well as discipline, I've written an article about it and I have a link to that article down below in the de description box. And if you want to learn how to get unblocked from change, I've been recently interviewed by the great Daniel Herrera, and I have a link to that interview, a snippet of that interview on my channel. I have a link to that up above and also down below in the description box. So basically, in this video, I'm going to talk about the theory behind this. So basically, each type has two types in which they look very much alike. For example, the INP tends to look a lot like an INTJ and ISFJ. So even when you're good at typologies, easy to get an INP confused with these two different types. And when you take on the qualities of one of these types, you tend to almost look like the wholesome version of your own type. And when you take on the qualities of the other version of your type, you tend to look a bit like the badass version of your own type. So with using the example of INP again, when IP looks ISFJ-like, so the ISFJ-like INFPs kind of look like the wholesome version, and then the INTJ-like INFPs look kind of like the badass version of the type. I'm going to talk about how this works. So basically, the wholesome version has your tertiary and fifth function at play here. So when the wholesome version of your type kind of looks like the well-adjusted version of your type, positively contributing to society. People tend to appreciate and uh, respect um, the presence of uh, the, the wholesome version of your type. However, there's another side of this is that when the qualities of this uh, version is taken too far, it could kind of appear a bit like a goody two-shoes, someone who's a little bit boring and uninteresting. And to the person themselves, when that person is taking on the qualities of the wholesome version, it could kind of feel like it's a bit limiting, like there's not like an extra dimension uh, to, to oneself. However, this type is pretty attractive. Like when people present as a wholesome version, it could be very, really, very attractive, kind of like in a good marriage material sense, because this is again the well-adjusted version of the of the type. So I'll kind of give the example of the INFP a little bit. And again, in future videos, I'm gonna go more in depth with the INFP and also the other types. But this is when INFPs are kind of I of J-like, they kind of look like uh, this is the version of INP that is ready to meet and adjust to people's needs in the moment, kind of has a very pleasant and kind, uh, pleasing demeanor, inviting demeanor, cooperative and welcoming to other people. And a lot of people, people think that because INPs are introvert feeling dominance that they don't smile. But really, when you make real life observations, INPs, the eyes of J like INPs kind of almost have they look like they almost have this constant smile on. They seem almost a bit diffident, and they could be rather terrible, too. So I'm going to talk more about this version later and also the versions of the other types. Now let's go on to the badass version. So um, the badass version of each type tends to look like the type that is disintegrating, <laughs> kind of unhealthy and a bit antagonistic to society. It seem kind of uh, a bit more, a bit more of the unpleasant version of the type. However, and also a poorly adjusted version. However, at the same time, when uh, you take on the badass version of your type, it kind of almost like brings another dimension to type. Because often a sense of depth comes from a sense of darkness. So 
when you take on the dark qualities of your type, it kind of brings in this extra depth that uh, allows for a sense of excitement. And it's kind of almost like a revolutionary um, version of your type or like the cool version of your type. And this badass version is kind of attractive in a different way. It's kind of um, attractive in being sexually enticing, I would say. So for the INFP, that would be kind of like when th those INTJ-like INFPs, they kind of look like they have their walls up. Uh, they look kind of snooty, snobbish, and they tend to kind of look, look down on others, a little bit uh, misanthropic, uh, critical of society, a bit eccentric in their, in their thoughts. However, um, there's another side of this in which they could also appear to be rather ingenious as, as well. Again, I'll, I'll talk more about this um, version of INFP. So let, I'll let you know more about the theory behind this. So the whole subversion of your type basically has your third and fifth function. And then the badass version has your inferior function and your fifth function. So when you become the wholesome version, it's like when you're trying to emphasize the third and fifth function. And when you become the badass version, that's when you are emphasizing the inferior function and also the sixth function of your type. So how does this work? So basically, the third function is your um, child function. So people tend to act a bit childish uh, when it comes to the third function. Um, however, when they learn to adult this function, which takes work, um, that you, you seem rather mature and also seem um, kind of responsible too. So you actually see people do this. So they, they're kind of childish with their third function, but they they learn to adult with it and they seem more mature. So I often like to give the example of ENTJ, no, ENTP and ESTP, when their extra feelings kind of childish, it looks like they're seeking attention and seeking to be loved. But when they start to adult with this function, this is when you see the ENTPs and ESTPs, they start to um, kind of take care of the needs of the group, uh, check in with others. So they start to mature with expert feeling. So this is basically it. So the wholesome version of your type is basically taking that third function and kind of uh, maturing it, which, you know, it's not like a very uh, pleasant task to do, but people like when you get, when you kind of like level up with your third function, it can actually feel rather good because um, you, you seem like you are someone who could possibly contribute to the people around you. So you appear like the well-adjusted version of your type. Again, with the fifth function, it's like the same kind of deal here. Uh, when types are immature, they tend to suppress their fifth function, uh, more or less. We have a tendency to do that. It takes a lot of energy to engage in that function. But we learn to, when we mature, we start to develop the fifth function more. It Because it's a way of bringing dimension to your first function, because it's kind of opposite. Uh, what I'm saying, what I mean by that is, say your first function is introvert feeling, like an INFP like me. Uh, when you bring out extrovert feeling, uh, it's taking out feeling in the opposite direction. It dimensionalizes that feeling, such as like what I'm feeling inside starts to, I'm showing it out more. And when I do that, it seems kind of more mature because inside introvert feeling could feel a lot within, well, a lot of like care and compassion, but it seems kind of cold on the outside. But when it can kind of bring that out more, it seems mature. And as a result, it's like the adjusted version of your your type and you see different types they tend to, different people individuals they kind of develop more of their third and fifth function tendencies and they kind of almost become that wholesome version of the the type I, and it's not like an easy development necessarily to because it's not like really enticing to develop the third function and fifth function um but when you do so um it could be very um uh, it can be very beneficial. It actually feels very good. It's like you're eating good and healthy food. So let's talk about the badass version. So when you, uh, the badass version basically has to do with the fourth function and the sixth function. And actually there's a natural tendency to be drawn into these functions. Um, there's something really enticing about like, that's why they, that's why they call when you get into the inferior function, the fourth function is getting into the grip. You get sucked into, you get obsessed by it. and you kind of take on the dark qualities of that fourth function. And same thing with the the demonstrative function 
as well, the sixth function, is that it's kind of like a secret a strength that you have, but your type tends to kind of ignore. But when you kind of like find it's like kind of like a like a sneaky trick in a way, like, haha, I got this, like, I'm able to make use of this strength. And it brings in a whole different dimension to type and makes them look rather interesting. However, I mentioned this before on my channel is it doesn't necessarily make the type to be emotionally mature. It looks like the type has leveled up by developing the fifth function, but it doesn't look like uh, like a necessarily a morally mature one. And I would say it's the same thing. It's usually the case when types first start to touch their fourth function, um, their inferior function, as well as their demonstrative function, they tend to do it in an immature fashion. And then later on, they learn to develop it in a mature kind of fashion. But usually the tendency is to be immature when it comes to getting into the grip and developing the monster function. It kind of makes, you know, when you first do it, it's like, it's very exciting piece. It's like the double version of your type. So it's, it's very enticing to do. It's almost like touching fire. But once you touch a fire, you get burned eventually. It kind of feels like you're eating bad junk food when you're engaging in these functions in an unhealthy obsessive kind of way i'll let you know how i first came upon this so there's this uh really great blog writer called stellar maze who came up with this idea of when you kind of uh develop in the uh direction of a certain type you start to tend to you tend to start to disintegrate and here i'm basically building upon the idea of that there's also a wholesome version as well so the basis of this theory is that each type, uh, according to socionics, has a benefactor and also a benefactee. So basically, the benefactor, uh, long story short, is the type that you kind of look up to a little bit, at least initially. So in the case with the INFP, the INFP kind of looks up a bit at the INTJ. And that's because the INTJ kind of has those attractive, alluring functions of the inferior function and the demonstrative. Um, for INP, that's expert thinking as so introverted intuition. So when the INP develops in that direction of you know the functions that they kind of admire, they could still they could kind of disintegrate a bit. And Stellar Maze has a great description of how that kind of occurs. So building upon the idea, what I realized is that the types also develop in the other direction. So when you go into uh, the benefactee, so. For the INFP, that is the ISFJ. So initially, uh, the INFP kind of looks down at the INF ISFJ because they're bearing the the third function and also the fifth function. And when the INFP kind of develops more into the ISFJ direction, they actually kind of become healthier. So what I would recommend is that it's actually good to kind of develop the traits, the wholesome traits, because you actually start to feel good when you kind of get into... Uh, the the badass version, it kind of feels like it's really unhealthy. But I also want to give like a bigger picture here as well. The bigger picture is that the world consists of the yin and the yang, and they're all equal. Uh, they bring in um, something different to bring wholeness to the whole entire sense of self, the whole entire personality. And the wholesome and badass version is that. So um, even during the lifetime, one person's lifetime, they could kind of develop into the wholesome direction and then into the badass direction or the other way around. Often, um, um, it, it, the pendulum kind of like switches back and forth. So basically, usually when you get into the badass version, usually it starts off as disintegration because usually you don't develop like the healthy version of that. Uh, but the baddest version is still important because it brings that extra level of dimension to the personality. And sometimes like uh, if you look at the bigger picture, the best way to serve society is not necessarily to cater to it, like being the well-adjusted version. Yes, you could serve society in that way, but you also serve society by kind of questioning it a bit by not making it comfortable. So that's where the badass version kind of comes in. So it's really when you integrate the two versions and that's kind of like a bit of a rare kind of feat that there's this sense of balance. But usually when you observe people, they either look like the 
wholesome or badass version, but it also depends on uh, where you are at life as well. I wrote these lines. Um, I think it rings true at me at some point when I'm reading it, but I think it still does. So the badass version is kind of like the harsher version and the wholesome version is the more objective version. The badass version transforms the system and the wholesome version could hold to the status quo. I think also another interesting thing is that uh, typology is a lesson in humility and openness. So for example, like you might prize the qualities of certain kind of type, but you have to watch out for overestimating the potential. That's when you kind of overestimate the potential of your benefactor, the, the, the version which is kind of the badass. Because when you take on those qualities too strongly, it's going to kind of hurt you. And also to also be open to people who you kind of look down at a little bit. So that's the benefactee. Because when you start to take on their qualities, it actually can be helpful to you. And what, what I've observed is that you may initially look up to a certain type, but later on when you um, have a relationship or, with them over a period of time or hang out with them over a period of time, your opinion can flip. And the same thing with a type that you kind of look down on, it, the, the, the opinion kind of uh, flips again. So in the future, I'm going to talk about, hopefully I'll be talking about the different types in more detail according to this paradigm of wholesome and badass. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, click like and subscribe. That certainly could help me out.